Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and there's an old saying that goes, good artists copy, great artists steal. And a lot of people seem to think, oh, I should just steal other people's artwork and post that online. No, 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 that's not what is meant by great artists steal. Great artists don't steal other people's work, they steal their techniques, adapt them, and make them their own. So here are five techniques that I basically just stole from other artists. Stick around. So as I just mentioned in the intro, uh, the idea is that you don't necessarily t steal other people's uh, specific works of the specific pieces, but you see what they're doing with techniques and grab those, and then grab some from another artist, and then grab some from another artist, and when you mix them all together and adapt them into your own work, then that's usually when people say, wow, you're really original. So today I wanted to look at five different techniques that I've sort of adapted into my work over the past ten years, and really they've been just from artists that I found online, and I was like, Hey, this looks cool, I'm going to try it, I tried it, and I pushed it a little bit further and made it something more unique to my own uh, using. So the first one is an artist by the name of Stefan Butcher and his uh, ink spray technique from his uh, YouTube channel to Daily Monster. I actually found out recently the guy started uploading again after a really long gap and I was really excited to see that because I love the guy's work. Uh, what he does is he sprays, uh, puts down a blob of ink, then grabs a can of compressed uh, air, uh, or a, what you might call a computer duster, and blasts that, and it sprays out the ink uh, in a really unique pattern and kind of branches out. Now, what he did with that technique is uh, would do the spray and then draw like a creature around it, uh, given his graphic design uh, background, it kind of was more suiting to, to that thing. But I, I loved that idea, and I remember dropping a comment back in the day, I was like, okay, what do you exactly are you using? Are you like, just sitting there and like blowing with a straw? And he goes, no, I used a can of uh, you know compressed air and just gave the ink a little <laughs> one of those. And I was like, oh man, that is brilliant. So I started doing that, but rather than creating a monster around it, I was like, you know, it looks like a like a bunch of weeds or like a root system. So I'd flip the whole thing over and draw a tree on top of it, and it actually looks pretty awesome. The second technique I grabbed was by an artist by the name of Lawrence Yang. I've been following his work since college, and I've talked about his stuff on this channel here before. Um, but what I kind of saw with him was uh, just a, a layering technique with mixed media, something I, at that point in time, had never really seen before. Uh, he primarily uses watercolor and gouache in the background, and then comes on top of that with ink. Uh, back in 2010, I actually essentially copied that, and just like, let's just do watercolor, and I, was, I didn't have uh, a whole lot of ink around uh, at, at that point in time, so I just thinned out black acrylic and was using that. And some of those pieces, uh, despite being 10 years old of, of my own collection, are still some of my favorite pieces I've ever done. Uh, and I still incorporate this, some of those techniques today, and some of the things like my watercolor bookmarks, and small, uh, small print pieces and things like that that I'll sell in my print box when I go to shows. Next up is a technique that uh, I've actually talked about, I think, at least once or twice here before, at least on a live show, uh, as well as over on my second channel, Sketch Every Day, and it's the mini thumbnails. I picked this up from a guy by the name of Dylan Pierpont. Uh, he actually is a working artist uh, out in, I think, Seattle at Microsoft. Uh, connected with him online sometime after I basically stole the technique from him. And then he told me that he just stole, he himself stole the technique from like a teacher of his. So it's just an ongoing process. But I was so enamored and inspired by that, I did this massive uh, 18 by 24 sheet of paper and 208 little compositions using that technique. You can see a time lapse of this over on my second channel. Uh, and I love the technique so much and I really learned so much from it that I literally adapted it straight into my daily sketches. And ever since that, that point in time, I have like, use that technique almost every single day in order to create a lot of the work that I've done over the past few years. Next up, for anyone who's been on YouTube a very long time, you might be familiar with uh, what is known as the Space Painters, uh, specifically a guy by the name of Brandon McConnell, who kind of popularized this idea of quick 30 minute or even, I think, God, he must have had like, it was like 30 second, one minute draw uh, paintings that he did. It was a lot of spray paint on like a piece of poster board and played with like newspaper. and got this really great layering technique and like flicked stars in. There's a lot of techniques I actually pulled from uh, watching those videos. But the one that I really kind of took to heart was just using spray paint on canvas. Now I tried my hand at a couple of these little space paintings and I was nowhere near as good at it as he was, obviously, because I just started doing it. Uh, but I was like, you know what, I'm not, I'm like, it's really inspiring, it's fun, um, sells a lot at street art shows and things like that, but I'm like, you know, I just I like the idea of just trying to adapt something else in. So one thing I grabbed out of that was just 
using some white spray paint, specifically to add mist and fog in my work. And ever since then, I've been using it <coughs> on number, a large number of pieces to the point where, unless I'm doing a night scene or a space scene, I'm probably using it on almost every piece. And the last one is uh, another uh, fellow YouTuber, a guy that's been uh, doing it just a little bit longer than I have, actually, uh, Tim Gonnard and his uh, three-layer uh, uh, foliage technique. Uh, this technique, if you look the guy up, I'll put a picture over here of the kind of stuff that he does. And it's uh, super inspiring, one, because it's, it's a very simple technique and makes things a lot more realistic. And I sort of, uh, uh, along this era of all these other artists, discovered him around 2010. Uh, and it, that was like the year that I started really kind of jumping forward with my work and pushing my work further and learning a lot, new te lot more techniques. Now, I took the sort of three-level uh, mid-tone shadow and highlight design and actually created the vast majority of my current techniques. Uh, a large portion of what I do today is because of watching those videos and, and seeing how he worked and adapting that into my own work. Now, I don't necessarily paint as realistically as he does, but I use that same uh, level of three distinct tonal values in order to create like 99% of the work that I do today. So when it comes to being inspired by other artists and other techniques, it's important to use those techniques in your own work to build up your own working set. In trying new techniques and trying new uh, ideas and pushing them into your own work and adapting them just however work however they decide to work for you, it's like this is how you develop one new techniques for yourself as well as to further your work in new ways. As an artist, it's always important to really kind of push your limits. And if you don't know where to start, grab a technique that another artist is using and just play with it for a while. And I think after a while you're going to start like, okay, I see what they're doing. I see how I'm doing it. It's not the same. But just because it's not the same doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, if you're doing something a little different, like, yeah, that's your own mind and your own experience as an artist. Telling yourself to adapt it, change it, make it your own. And that's the core of being more original and more adaptive to steal techniques from artists and make them your own. That's what it means to steal like an artist. So as always, if you learned anything in that video, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps stuff out. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Check me out on social media links in the description box below. Keep on creating. This has been from Cinderblock Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. That was kind of right. I feel like things are out of order. I haven't done this in a while. Huh.